we want to find vertices of a rectangle that contains two given vertices in different quadrants. These vertices are to be in different quadrants. I didn't state the problem in its entirety uh, too much. It would take too much board space. Uh, the uh, given vertices uh, we'll regard as being here. And the other vertices need to be in different quadrants. They need to be in different quadrants uh, both from these two vertices and from one another. So the new vertices can't be in the third quadrant and they can't be in the same quadrant. Okay, well, let's consider what we mean by a rectangle having these vertices. Well, if you have, if you have these vertices, then you have this side. Now, if you have this side, you're going to have to have two sides perpendicular to this side. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a rectangle. So uh, that means Let's see, I'm going to draw a line that's hopefully perpendicular. Uh, hopefully, uh, this is a right angle. It looks like I missed it by a little bit, but you get the idea. This should be at a perpendicular. Uh, and this is also going to be at a perpendicular to this line, which means it's going to be parallel to this one. Okay. Now, we could pick any two points on this line at equal distance, uh, I'm sorry, any two points, one on each of these lines, and at equal distance from this line, and we would have a rectangle. For example, uh, we could pick this point and this point. They're at equal distances from this rectangle, and if we connect them, uh, we have a rectangle here. Again, um, I'm not getting my right angles correct, just due to my uh, angle well, my perspective with the board, uh, but you should get the idea from this, okay? Uh, and if you sketch this, you're probably not going to get them uh, all that great either. Uh, but you're probably going to do better than I'm doing here. Okay, well, you understand that if I choose any two points on these parallel lines that are perpendicular to this line through the given vertices, and if these two points are at equal distance from that line from the respective vertices, say, uh, you're going to get a rectangle. Now, these two points aren't going to satisfy the conditions because these vertices are in the same quadrant as these. And in fact, if you pick any two points along these two lines in this direction from the original, uh, you're going to get a perfectly good rectangle, but it's going to be uh, all the vertices the vertices that you pick if you go in this direction are always going to be in the third quadrant. So this isn't going to help you. Now if you go in this direction, you see that this line passes through the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. And this line passes through the second quadrant and the first quadrant. Okay? So um, if we picked our points out here, That's even worse than before, but uh, I'll try it here. That's, okay. If we picked our points here, uh, our two vertices would be in a different quadrant from the given vertices. However, uh, they'd be in the same quadrant as one another. Now, can you see where we would be able to pick two points uh, that would be in different quadrants than these two and in different quadrants than one another? You should pause and you should do so, but I'm going to go ahead. Well, I could pick a vertex here at this distance from this point, and if I go the same distance from this point, I get another one. So that here I have a perfectly good rectangle with uh, the two new vertices in different quadrants from one another and in different quadrants from the given vert vertices. I could probably uh, go to here and, let's see, this distance and this distance, yeah. Uh, okay, I could use these two vertices. This would form a perfectly good rectangle, okay? Uh, this would be a perfectly good side to go with this side and this side in the rectangle. Um, 
the question then becomes, how do I get the coordinates of these vertices? How do I get coordinates of the new vertices? So we see first that it's possible to construct a rectangle uh, with two given vertices in different quadrants. Okay, now let's see what we do if we know the coordinates of the two given vertices. Let's say this coordinate, this vertex is at negative 5, negative 1, this one at negative 1, negative 3. How does that help us uh, find the new vertices? Well, first we get the slope. slope between the given vertices is what? Well, rise over run equals, let's see, we're going from negative 5 to negative 1. That's the run from negative 1 to negative 3 is the rise. So it appears that the uh, rise is, let's say, negative 3 minus negative 1 from this point to this point, and the run from this point to this point is negative 1 minus negative 5. That equals 2 over 4, negative 2 over negative 4, or 1 half. Okay, so now we have the slope. So the slope of this line is, okay, let's see. That was negative, and that's negative. Yeah, but that slope is negative, so I've got, a, I've got a mistake there. Let me see what I've done. Okay, well, 1 minus negative 5 is plus 4. That makes the slope negative 1 half, as it should be. Okay, so we got slope negative 1 half, and now we want to draw uh, two lines. We want to move along two lines uh, that are both perpendicular to this. Slope of the perpendicular line... is a negative reciprocal of the slope of this line of negative one-half. So the slope is two, uh, two being the negative reciprocal of one-half. Okay, to move along this line, um, let's just move along here. Let's move one unit over. If we move one unit over, we've got to move two units up. So we move one unit over, two units up. Where does that put us? Well, we were at negative 1, negative 3. That puts us at uh, 1 over from negative 1 is 0. 2 up from negative 3 is negative 1. Now, that doesn't fit the scale of the graph real well. The picture uh, doesn't fit the reality. This slope should be uh, a little bit steeper. But anyhow... Uh, the point zero, negative one is on this line. And what about this one? If we move over one unit and up two, again, it doesn't look right. Um, I, I'm going to have to fudge my one unit. If I move over one unit and up two, that's going to put me at what point? You should stop and see if you can answer this. We're moving one unit from negative 5. That's going to put us at negative 4. And two units from negative 1 is going to put us at plus 1. Okay, well, right now, we're very close. 0, negative 1, we're very close to being in the second quadrant. Here, we're already in the... Uh, sorry, 0, negative 1 is very close to being in the fourth quadrant. Negative 4, 1 is already in the second quadrant. So what do we have to do? Well, if we move just a little bit from this point, from the 0, negative 1 point, uh, we're going to be in the fourth quadrant. If we move a little bit more from this point, we're going to be in the first quadrant. Well, let's try uh, moving two units over again, or one unit over, and we're going to go two units up. This will be 1, and this will be 2, and the scales in these triangles are, are very bad due to the uh, sketch that I made. Uh, but we move over 1 and up 2, where does that put us? Uh, we move over 1 from 0, up 2 from negative 1. Well, you should be able to figure that out, but that's going to put us at the point 1, 1. 
And if we do the same here, we're going to move over one and up two. Over one here and up two here. That's going to put us at the point negative three, three. Okay, well, at the point negative three, three uh, and one, one, these are both points on these two, uh, two respective lines. They're in different quadrants, and their quadrants are different from the quadrant of this point. So we now have vertices of the rectangle satisfying the given conditions. So we move right one unit. Well, I'm going to pause this and I'll write it down, then we'll talk about it because you see what I just did. Okay, we see now that if we move right one unit and up two, because we do that, why? Because the slope of this line segment is negative one half the slope of any side of the rectangle adjacent to either of these vertices is going to have to be the negative reciprocal of that slope because the uh, motion has to be in a direction perpendicular to the segment. So uh, if we move right one unit and up two, then we've moved along a slope of two to the uh, second point. Now if we do that from negative one, negative three, we get to zero, negative one. Negative one, negative three plus a one, two motion puts us at zero, negative one. And from here, the one, two motion puts us at negative four, one, and you can easily verify that. And if we do this again from these points, uh, we're going to get to this point and this point, as I illustrated here, but the uh, picture uh, didn't work out really well. Um, the scale was wrong. Uh, the angles were uh, not drawn very carefully. So uh, we do that. Anyhow, we get these points. And this point is now in the first quadrant, this point in the second. And that's different from the quadrant of the original two vertices. So we have now a rectangle with these vertices. Now, this is not the only way this could be done, but uh, this, this works. And notice we could also, we don't get into the fourth quadrant um, with our first move, but any short move after that will get us into the fourth quadrant. A short move from the negative 4, 1 point will keep us in the second quadrant. So we could also uh, find a point in the uh, two points, one in the fourth quadrant, one in the second, that would complete a rectangle. Again, satisfying this, uh, the uh, criteria. And uh, you have to be aware of that. So um, Now this is, you know, some students have said that you couldn't find any problems like this. So probably no problems that are phrased identical to this, but we do in chapters two and three uh, deal with the idea of slopes and uh, perpendicular slopes. And there are a number of problems that ask you to use your knowledge of that along with your knowledge of basic geometry to answer questions. So uh, it's to your benefit to understand this situation and think about how this sort of thinking could apply to others.